Hey there mamas and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Christy and I am a mom of four kids. One being three months old and then I also have an 11, 10 and four year old as well. I'm so happy you're here. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing my three month postpartum update along with a three month baby update for baby Aubrey. So if that's something you're interested in, please stick around for today's video. All right, mamas, it has been three months, which is crazy, three months that I've had a baby three months ago. <laughs> I had a baby during one of the craziest times in the world during the pandemic. It was so wild and crazy. Um, I didn't share a whole lot, but I did share a few videos um, about my labor and delivery. So if you want to check those out, they will be linked in the description box below. Um, but yeah, so here we are three months later and I just want to share with you guys a little bit of what's going on with Aubrey as well as myself. She has the hiccups. <laughs> so I did write some notes down in my phone so I can stay on task and don't get sidetracked and go into all these long side conversations. So this video stays pretty concise. So I will be looking down my phone periodically just so I can stay on track. So. Aubrey was born on June 4th, so she is over three months now, um, but I haven't had the time to sit down and do this video, but now I do, so here we are. Right now, she is wearing a three months, um, and it's very snug, but I, I take I attribute that to being the fact that she also wears cloth diapers. Yes, yeah, so a lot of things are a little snug anyways because of that fact. Um, she was weighed at her two month checkup at 13 pounds. So I would gather she's at least 14 pounds by now. Um, she is very chunky. <laughs> she is a chunky baby, which I absolutely love. Look at these thighs. She got little ham hocks. Um, uh, yeah, so she was 13 pounds when she weighed in on her two month appointment. So I'm, gather I'm thinking she's probably like 13 pounds by now. Um, but yeah, so. She had her two month shots then. That was the most dramatic <laughs> experience ever. Um, I have three other kids and I never cried at any of their appointments, but for some, for some reason, as soon as she started wailing, I just started bawling. It was so sad. I was like, oh my gosh, I wish I could help you. So it was really heartbreaking to watch her get her shots. So I'm not looking forward to many more of those. Um, but yeah, so she had her two month shots and she did um, have um, a little fever afterwards and she was really fussy, wasn't eating. And her dad called the doctor. <laughs> Even though this is our second child together, um, he, was working a lot more then and he was off work during this period of time where she was going to the doctor and stuff like that because of the pandemic so um he was just a little up frantic about it even though i explained to him it's you know normal for her to get a fever and not feel that well after shots he didn't believe me he called the doctor <laughs> but um yeah she told him you know if it if her fever was like over 101 to call back it never did get that high so she was perfectly fine after about a few hours. So um, dad chilled out, <laughs> but she's been doing great, growing great. Um, there are no major concerns except for her skin. She does have this um, lighting, lightening of her skin on certain areas, like on her back and um, really like dry patches on her elbows and knees. And so her doctor did prescribe her with like a steroid cream. Um, to put on and that has been um, helping her skin to kind of even out a little bit um, and I've uh, been putting on Aveeno on top of that and I've also bathed her in um, Shea Moisture body wash and coconut baby wash and that to me has been helping too. I was using um, a, a different brand I can't think of it right now but um, yeah so we've completely switched to Aveeno and Shea Moisture and that has really helped her skin a lot. Um, so she doesn't really have like a favorite toy, um, but she does love blankets. Like she will hold onto the blanket when she's going to sleep. It's so cute. 
Um, I will show you guys a little video <laughs> clip. And uh, she just goes right to sleep. Sometimes I will let her hold like something um, like a plush or something like that. But it's not like something that she has to have. She definitely prefer prefers her blanket over anything else. Loves it. And it's funny because it never had like a lovey it was more just me i don't know if it was because i physically breastfed aiden and um aubrey is bottle fed uh, which you can also learn more about in my postpartum update video but i'll talk a little bit more about it in this one as well but um yeah so maybe that's why i don't really know but she loves holding onto her blanket, rubbing across her face. I actually have to keep an eye on her because she will pull the blanket up over her head and go to sleep. And it's funny because last night I pulled it from over her head. I went, took a shower, got out, and it was back over her head again. Her head again. And then I pulled it back down, sat down to do some editing. And then my husband came upstairs and he's like, did you know she has the blanket over her head? And I'm like, yeah, again. So we have to really stay on top of that because she pulls it up over her head every time. Um, I don't know, this is a comfort thing for her, but yeah, we gotta be careful about that. Uh, she definitely is laughing and smiling. Her laugh is so cute. It's kind of like, almost sounds like it's not fully there yet, but she's trying to. Um, but she's definitely all smiles and giggles and um, I, I will show you a clip of her or try to get you a clip here of her laughing um, She laughs more so at the at the kids when they're doing something crazy versus at me or dad But she definitely loves to laugh at her brothers um, Mostly and then sometimes if uh, Naya makes a funny face at her she'll laugh at that But she's definitely laughing and smiling Um more smiles than giggles right now she is sleeping really good i think for a breastfed baby um with aiden he was up all the time with her she wakes up one time right now at night she started doing that about i would say about a month and a half ago she goes to bed kind of early like 7 30 8 o'clock and then she'll wake up again in the middle of the night around two ish um i give her a bottle and she goes right back to sleep and she won't wake up again to about six and then after so she wakes up to eat at six she goes back to sleep again and doesn't wake up until like nine so um she's to me she sleeps really really good and um you know she, at first she was waking up a lot so i'm definitely enjoying these little one nights because i'm up anyway in the middle of the night pumping so it doesn't really bother me i'm um, like i'm not like overly exhausted or anything like that so we haven't had any like super late nights or anything super crazy knock on wood hopefully that continues um, but to me she's a very good sleeper um we did go through a period of like i guess regression where she wasn't really napping she maybe sleep for like a few minutes like 10 minutes if that and if she slept longer we had to like hold her to sleep um and that, a little bit part of that is also dad's fault because he loves to hold her um, especially when she's sleeping he'll like go to sleep and they'll just be sleep together but um now it's like well look you're going back to work soon so you can't be doing that you're messing me up but now she's gotten to the point where i can lay her back in her bassinet and she goes to sleep just fine um that only lasted maybe about a week if that about a week and a half maybe um where she wasn't really napping that long but that that passed pretty quickly so no complaints there i mean happens all babies kind of go through that little week of regression at some point in time so yeah she's had hers for now and um she's been doing fine going back to sleep since then so we have been doing tummy time with her since you know the doctor said it was cool to start doing tummy time i would say maybe i have like one month checkup she was like oh you should start going doing tummy time we've been doing it um she's not a fan um she i try to keep her on doing it for at least 15 to 20 minutes at you know at most uh, right around 10 she's like mm -mm, i'm done with this <laughs> i got her like a little mat thing where you have like, the toys that hang down and stuff like that and i'll or sometimes i'll put like the toys in front of her while she's doing tummy time um so sometimes she's with it and sometimes she's not I try to make it a daily thing, but it doesn't always work out, but she's really strong. She will sit up all the way up on, on her elbows and hands. Um, very good neck uh, strength and um, head motion. She will look at you and stuff like that. I'll try to get down there with her to make her, you know, stay down there a little bit longer. That seems to help. 
Um, but yeah, she's great at doing tummy time. She just doesn't like it very much. <laughs> um, we had this uh, pillow with like the little elephants, like the little boppy lounger. So we're at the point now where we're gonna be taking, you're not using that anymore. So it's time to pack it up because she's now pushing with her feet and she's like pushing up on her, on the pillow. And um, I had her sitting on there doing one day when we were doing homeschool and I was helping Aiden with his math and I turned back and she had went all the way back over where her head was like this close to touching the floor. And I was like, okay, that yeah, we're not doing this anymore. <laughs> so um, uh, we're not using that no more. So she has, she's very strong. She's, uh, when I, sometimes when I put her on, um, her tummy she's like inching a little bit like she's trying to move so she's definitely ready to start moving that body you just got to keep your eyes on her because she'll be rolling all over the place um oh i did want to mention she did have cradle cap does have cradle cap she had it really really bad before um i started kind of trying to tackle it a little bit better um I've tried like everyone said, oh, just put some breast milk on it. Did that. I gave the girl a full dunking in the breast milk, okay? And um, it didn't get any better. Uh, but it was really, really bad. Her hair was starting to fall out. And you know, she rubs her head back and forth a lot. And so a lot of her hair was falling out. Um, one of the things I did do was change her bassinet sheet to like a satin sheet, which helped out a ton as far as like the pulling. Um, because the cloth one that I had, um, she would wake up in the morning and there would be hair all over it. So um, I switched it to a satin one and now it's very minimal that hair is like being pulled on, on there. And um, I've been using coconut oil and shea moisture shampoo on her hair. And then I use like a bamboo brush to kind of just lift up like the flakes and stuff like that. On the surface and it's gotten a lot better since then i did have a post on it on my instagram as well so if you want to know what ex exactly i use you can definitely follow me over there to see um but yeah so i've been tackling that and it is getting a lot better um i don't wash it at every bath time but every other bath time um i do wash it and she's going to sleep so she, as you can see, I got a bib on her. She um, has started drooling really bad, wanted to chew on everything. Um, so I'm gearing up for this teething phase. So um, she started, I would say, wanting to like gnaw on things about two to three weeks ago. And now she's like full on drools, like uh, everywhere. It's just drool all the time, messing up her clothes. So I was like, okay, it's time to pull out the bibs. Um, so yeah, she's definitely entering that phasing of, of teething um, and wanting to just put everything in her mouth and chew on everything. Um, but yeah, so we are definitely entering that stage. Um, okay, so I think pretty much that's all that I can say about Aubrey. She's doing great. She um, is, you know, really healthy. I don't have any like major concerns or anything like that. So in regards to postpartum, whew, it's been a struggle. I'm finally at a really good place. You guys know I was struggling after I had her for quite a while. Um, I had a lot of like struggles with like breastfeeding and things like that. So now I am exclusively pumping and prior, like at first when I was first started exclusively pumping, I was pumping every three hours. Um, you know, if you are about to be a new mom and you are choosing to pump or you have to pump, it is good to have like that rigorous routine in the beginning to build up your milk supply. Cause once it regulates, it's like, bleh. it's like, it's that. So after about six weeks, maybe closer to nine weeks, actually around nine weeks, um, my milk supply definitely started to regulate and now it is pretty consistent. I know exactly how much I'm going to pump at what time um, because it has, this is just as good as it's going to get right now. I did start my period uh, last month. It's like, 
it's really unfair right you know <laughs> like why because i know some women as long as they're breastfeeding they never have a period but i i i'm not like that <laughs> when i had aiden even i was literally like you know physically breastfeeding him and i still got my period after two months three months so i'm just not that blessed um anyway so i got my period last month and i've had it again this month already Ugh, so i hate getting my period <laughs> but anyways um so i have started back and that did affect my milk supply a little bit as a matter of fact i was talking to one of my best friends about my milk supply dropping and i had no clue why and it was super frustrating and um even my husband was frustrated he was like what's going on because you know, she was not getting like i was normally pump around five to six ounces um consistently at least minimum five to six ounces and then what right before my period started i was only getting like two to three ounces and so that affected feeding her and yeah so he was having issues and so I, I didn't have any answers i didn't know why it was happening which was even more frustrating like i don't know why my milk supply is doing this um i ate oatmeal i increased my water i was doing all this stuff to try to figure out you know why it had taken such taken such a dive so i you know i had to start using my stash which is why i said it's super important for you to pump as much as you can in the beginning weeks before your milk regulates because you might need to use your stash at some point and you need to build that up to have it because i swear if i did not have it i don't know what i would have had to you know i probably would have just had to use formula to supplement which is totally fine um i just don't want it i didn't want to so i didn't have to use my stash to uh supplement during that period of time and it only lasted for about two to three days where i wasn't pumping enough to feed her and then my period started and i was like oh well that's why so you know during that first one to two days before it actually starts my milk does take a little bit of a dip and it's super frustrating um but yeah so my period is back yay uh, as far as weight loss i was approximately 240 pounds when i had aubrey like at the time that i had her i was like 240 um i am now down to 204 i was 203 last week but i gained a pound <laughs> I'm down to 204 um, and I started back you know walking I'm trying to work into jogging and hopefully running I committed to doing a 5k at some point um, between now and the beginning of the new year I just have to find one that's going on that I can do I'll probably have to do a virtual one virtual 5k which is cool so I'm committed to doing one of those before the new year and so I am watching what I eat, obviously. I'm also dairy free, mainly because of her and breastfeeding. Um, she basically is reacting like really gassy and really big spit ups and stuff like that um, in the beginning. And so I switched to no dairy and she's been doing a lot better with that. Uh, Cause at one point she just could not sleep. She was so uncomfortable. Like you could just see her just not doing well and um i personally didn't want to deal with that so i just cut out all dairy um sometimes i sneak in a little bit of um uh creamer in my coffee but that's about it <laughs> and so um and you can tell when i have dairy because she gets really gassy all over again i feel bad i'm sorry baby i only had a little creamer <laughs> that's been a struggle for me because i love cheese and uh i really love cheese and so I have had to kind of like rework a lot of things within my lifestyle, eating wise and things like that. And so that's been really hard to deal with. But um, now I've gotten a lot more used to it and it's a little bit more simple to for me to kind of like make that transition when I'm choosing things to eat and stuff like that. So that's been going pretty good. But yeah, so I'm down to 204 now and I'm ready to take things up a notch. And so I'm um, planning to rework my diet a little bit. I, 
used to do uh, intermittent fasting, but I can't do that right now because I'm breastfeeding and I don't want anything else to affect my milk like it already has. So I'm just gonna make sure to eat better and focus on um, making better choices overall and exercising a little bit more. Hey y'all, so I'm currently editing and realized that I forgot to talk about my postpartum hair loss. So I wanted to just really quickly um, share a little bit about that. So as y'all can see, I've got like no edges. <laughs> so yeah i um, accepted that so me and my edges <laughs> are hanging on i have started using a couple of products that a couple of people have recommended um i know tamarika told me about so for eight so i've been using that and um yeah so i'm just trying to stay on top of taking care of my hair and dealing with what comes with that so yeah i did want to say tell you guys a little bit about that too Okay, so back to the video. So I didn't see a lot of this in a lot of postpartum videos, but I did want to go ahead and talk about it. And I would like to do a video with my husband about this. So we'll see if I can get him to do it. Disclaimer, this is definitely not child friendly. So just letting you know. Um, but one of the things that took a, a nosedive at the end of pregnancy and then right after having Aubrey obviously was our sex life. And I always felt kind of guilty about it, kind of, but not a whole lot because I'll, most of the time I'm just really exhausted like on those last few months of pregnancy. And definitely you have to wait anyway, six weeks after you have the baby. I would say maybe about a month ago, yeah, about a month ago, um, we have been working on our intimacy. Uh, I am a Christian and funny story, um, my husband is not, <laughs> um, but I am and he respects that. And um, because of that, um, I did go through a devotional that focused a little bit more on intimacy and marriage. And that kind of helped, you know, spark something within me to make that more of a priority in our marriage. Um, because honestly, it really wasn't the, you know, during my pregnancy anyway, mostly. And if you know me, if you're like, my friends are probably watching this and they're probably thinking, girl, you ain't never been. <laughs> <laughs> it's never been a priority for you. I'm just very different. I'm, I'm, so it's not something that I have to have on the table all the time versus my husband who's very opposite of me who does need it all the time. And so it was something I wanted to work on um, for us to be able to come to some kind of like compromise on how often and all that kind of stuff. And so um, without getting into any crazy details, um, it's gotten a lot better. <laughs> I've worked on my part and he's worked on his and we are now in a much more uh, productive space <laughs> and things are going well. So intimacy has returned and it's not even just about sex but just all around like we spend a lot of times talking and cuddling and um, just enjoying each other. Um, right now he's away in the field so i won't see him again until this weekend so um when we have those long breaks away from each other we try to make sure that we're um, staying in contact with each other as much as we can because most of the time it's not until at night anyway stay in contact with each other and we send sweet messages and try to make that time away from each other um you know as good as it can be so that when we come back together it's even sweeter uh, that kind of leads us into the last thing I wanted to talk about, which is birth control. And so when I first got pregnant with Aubrey, I was like, I'm getting my tube tied. Like, this is never happening again. Um, I, when I got pregnant, like, the beginning part of my pregnancy was horrible. It was terrible. I was sick all the time. I couldn't eat. It was terrible. Like, one of my best friends sent me some ginger candies and... Um, they were praying for me because it was just that bad. I couldn't keep anything down. I tried so hard. I was miserable. So I was like, yeah, I'm getting my tube tied. I'm not having no more babies. I'm not dealing with this no more. Um, then a little bit later on, <laughs> I changed my mind. I was like, ah, I don't really want to do like a surgery type of thing. Like I'm not really into surgeries. So I was like, no, nope, never mind. We're not going to do that. I even asked my husband, hey, do you want to get snipped? Of course, he said no. I don't know what guys hold, why they hold on to this thing, but I understand it's a painful process or whatever, but he was like, nah, I ain't doing that. And so, um, and then when Aubrey was born, 
he definitely didn't want to do it because he's like well what if i want to have another one i was like well we're not having any more so either you're gonna have to divorce me and find someone else or something because i'm not having no more babies um and now that she's gotten a little bit older he's like yeah you're right we're not having no more babies <laughs> we got enough kids in here um our grocery bill just gets higher and higher um but yeah so we as of now do not want to have any more children but neither one of us are going to make a permanent way to prevent that from happening and um not on the pill or anything like that so we both decided to do like a natural um family planning method for our birth control pro um our birth control um you can look that up because it's way too much not way too much but i just don't feel like going into it right now but yeah so you can look it up natural natural family planning we're just gonna go about it that way for now and if something else changes down the line then you know we'll make adjustments but as of now that's what we're doing um but yeah so i think that's pretty much it um not really sure couldn't think of anything else that's all i had on my list anyway um, but if you guys have any questions whatsoever about postpartum about aubrey just let me know in the comments and i will do my very best to answer your questions and thank you so much for tuning in to today's video if you have not yet subscribed definitely hit that red button i would love to have you as a part of my family here on hey there mama and i will see you in the next video Bye bye